Now, the Bible says in the book of Exodus, the Lord meets Moses and he says to him, I want to give you an assignment. This is his purpose. He's eight years old. Touch your neighbor, say, please do not wait till you're eight. Check and see if there is gray hair in his beard. Huh? And he said, please do not wait until you are 80. This is when the encounter comes. But when the encounter comes at the burning bush, we all know the story. The Lord wants for the purpose he deposited in Moses. You can imagine this man was sent. All of us know according to scripture. He was sent before he started crying. We know you. And they wanted to kill him and he missed it and he did not die and he was taken as a as a what an adopted son into the pharaoh's palace he grew up as a prince but his purpose was there lying dead shall we say god was not in him he was in him his purpose was there until he awoke this time 40 years of the wilderness Every man must go through the wilderness. Every human being must go through a wilderness for you to be able to transition into the spirit. If you refuse this wilderness, you will never graduate into the spirit. You will never, I can assure you. The sufferings of the spirit are for all of us. Even Jesus suffered. He suffered for the same issue. When you go through the, the, the wilderness, then you graduate to glorification. You cannot receive glorification without this wilderness. No one can bypass it. Even if you grew up in a rich family, the Lord will remove you from Pharaoh's palace and he will take you into Jethro's home. The Lord will remove Jacob from his own mother and father and the mother loved him. And he says, you go to Laban. Hey, you will not know. Hey, my parents are not here. There is a purpose to it. There is a purpose to it. Jesus himself went through that whole suffering. The scripture says that Jesus, two things happened to him. Jesus in his form as God cannot be hungry. But he was in the wilderness. What he did? and 40 nights and afterward he was hungered he felt a level of hunger it was too much too too much to the level that it released a temptation from the enemy that means that it was at that level that was a wilderness he had to graduate in this thing of the holy spirit touch your neighbor say how far are you from graduating in this wilderness and some people refuse it. It is a simple thing. Let me give you, this is a secret. If you yield to the spirit, it is going to be quick. It is going to be quick. It will be as though it never happened. But I've told you before, that when it comes to things of purpose, amen, you cannot skip the process. You must go through there, whether you like it or not. Even if you have richy parents over rich what the lord will make sure that in that path of the wilderness you are alone you are alone they will make meetings on the other side over what is wrong with this person and you you are there because god is saying you must you must go through this place for you to be glorified you enter your family will forget you they will be like what happened to this man maybe there is something wrong should we take them to Tapika? what should we do we call a psychiatrist my dear that is a wilderness even jesus passed it jesus gets his disciples and goes to the mountain before he's killed and he says you people please watch with me i beg you please watch with me and he goes back to his knees he asked god three times and god is saying this is the cup you must drink whether you like it or not there will be no glory without you drinking that cup there is no shortcut touch your neighbor say there is no shortcut God has not called you to a good life. 
He has not called you to a comfortable life. You take the process, you finish the wilderness, then the glorification comes. There is no shortcut. There is a way you must pass. That is when I learned that God can never send you to help people who are suffering unless you have suffered. He will never send you to help people, to heal them if you have not felt what it means to be sick. When the Lord was training me in that dimension, I've never been sick like sick, sick, sick. But now, <laughs> there is a dimension of the spirit in the prophetic where when someone is sick, the pain is, moves from them and it comes on me. I feel like my leg cannot move because I know that someone here cannot move. And that I have to feel that pain. And then many times I stand here and I'm like, oh, please touch where you are. <laughs> Touch where there is pain. It is because now I feel my back. I don't speak because I think that there is someone in pain. No, immediately when I'm in the spirit, the, ah, the lower back will hurt like I'm going to give birth that minute. So when I say, please touch where there is pain, I know exactly. Sometimes I explain and I say, there is someone who has pain in their left ear because at that time there is nothing wrong with me but the pain is unbearable I must feel it for me to be able to release you from that pain that is a prophetic dimension God can never send you to help people unless you know what it means to be in their situation if they have never chased you from rent or 50k I mean uh, and some people are going through these things and they are thinking, why am I going through this? Why is God allowing this? God is a good God. No! He's good to allow you to suffer so that the glory that comes from you can glorify him. I said, if you have never been chased from a house, huh? because of rent, I have a rent issue. I don't know what to do. You might say, this one doesn't know how to be responsible for their lives. You understand? You will say, now you, they gave you money, God gave you money, you ate it. You can say all sorts of things. But if you know where you are at that time, you will immediately say, money appear. Because I know this situation. Let the money appear this day. You know what it means. If people have not played with you, betrayed you, you will never be able to help others. So everything you are going through, someone say, is of purpose. So when Jesus, when God gets Moses and says, I want to send you to deliver my people, he gives him the instruction and Moses asks him, who should I say sent me? Yeah. Who? Who should I say sent me? There is something you must learn here. We call God Jehovah, Nisi, Adonai, Elohim, El Shaddai, mm -hmm. Raphael. Mm -hmm. We call him all sorts of names. And he is all those names. But if you notice in scripture, 
it is men that are referring to him as those. It is men that I met the God that heals. I met the God that prospers. That is a dimension. It is the dimension of God that has been revealed to the man because of the situation he has been in. That when the Lord wants to release something, he will not come in all himself. Sometimes he doesn't need El Shaddai to show up. Because your situation is a sickness. Why do we have to bring the all sufficient God? Oh, we release that dimension and we send angels with it. We send angels that are surgeons, let them remove, let them put, let them do whatever. Let them cut you, remove an ear and put back. It is okay. That is the only dimension you need. So you will call on Jehovah your healer. That is what people have encountered. There is a dimension they've encountered. But if you encounter God, God, the God that Moses encountered, he is called I am. That is what he calls himself. All the other names of God are people calling him those names because they've encountered a dimension of him. But him, he is in the world of Caesar, you are Paul. This is the man that was formed in dust. He's called Paul. The man that is formed in dust has a name according to that formation, according to that structure. That man is Alan. Amen? You understand me? But the man that is from the spiritual dimension is called Zoe. Do you understand what I'm saying? The other one is a different person. Now, this is the reason why Jesus meets Simon. It's called Simon Peter. He is not called Simon Peter. Simon is another man, and Peter is another man. Jesus is another man, and Christ is another man. Jesus is the name of Jesus, of the natural man that was flesh. Christ is the name of the appointed one. After he had finished the process and he became anointed, he became glorified. He is called Christ. There is no Jesus Christ. If you want to say it, you say Jesus the Christ. There is no Jesus Christ. Jesus is the man that came as a word and he became flesh. Christ is the man that was flesh and ascended and was glorified and he is seated on the right hand of the Father. That is another man. There is no Jesus Christ. There is Jesus and then there is Christ. And if you want to refer to Jesus so much, you say Jesus the anointed one. So in the same way, when Jesus meets Simon, he says, you are Simon by Jonah. You shall be called Kephas, which means rock, which is translated bitter. Until Simon ah, steps into the purpose. Until he steps into the purpose. That is why the Bible says that on you, on you, on you. Peter, shall I build my church? He's not talking about Peter the man. He's talking about Peter the rock. The man that is translated into this spiritual man. He's talking about this spiritual dimension of Simon. I'm here to declare that in this week, God is going to release testimonies to you. It's not a time to cry. It is a time to celebrate. Welcome for our main Sunday service from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. filled with deliverance, healing, miracles, signs, wonders, as well as one-on-one -on -one sessions with a prophet for direction. See you there. Shalom.
out, oh, I've loved Peter so much. Uh -uh. That in the natural, Simon by Jonah, in the spirit, the spirit, the dimension of God that existed in this Simon by Jonah was a rock. And Jesus is known as a rock. And so that is the dimension of God that was in Peter. It's not because Peter was God. It's not because Peter is this and that. No. As a matter of fact, in your own logical understanding, you wouldn't choose out of the 12, you wouldn't choose Peter. But that is who he was meant to be. That was his purpose. And when the Lord met him, he did not meet Alan. He met Zoe. You understand what I'm saying? Touch your neighbor and say, if God has given you a name, you had better drop the other name. And I know God has given everyone a name. Me, I have one name. And because it is God's name, even the others, I don't know. I don't even care if they are my names. I have one name. And people say, why are you called Prophet Don? Because that's the only name. Why do you want me to call myself according to the world? I am not of this world. I call myself what God calls me. It's the only dimension I want to see. Until everything that is deposited in that dimension can appear to me and manifest in the natural. This dimension of, of God, in the natural I meet Alan, in the spirit there is no Alan. In the spirit there is Zoe. So when you begin to operate as Zoe, there is a dimension of God that you will be tapping into. As a matter of fact, by the time the Lord gives you that name, he's trying to say, just call yourself what I call you. Do not try to understand it. Just call yourself my son. Call yourself what I am. What I've called you. Because when you call yourself that, you are planting and invoking dimensions of that realm to appear in the natural that you will not call when you are calling yourself your old name. When the, when the Lord comes unto you, he comes as a word. Amen? He comes as a word. The Bible says that there is an incorruptible seed. It is in word form. What is supposed to happen to that word? Just like any seed, it is dropped into the ground. Touch your neighbor, say, first it dies. Say it properly. Now say, first I die. It is thrown into the ground. That means that deposit is already in you. It has to die. If there is no death, there is no glorification. After it dies, then the scripture comes to life that says, the Lord that quickeneth the dead. He quickens the dead. He does not quicken the living. He does not quicken people that are alive. Touch your neighbor say, if you're still sober, if you're still in your right senses, Amina, there is no quickening that can come to you. The quickening comes to people that are dead. Dead to the flesh, dead to the world, dead to life, dead to everything. Because that is why Peter, Paul says, in you I live. In other words, I died, then I started to live. Without the death, you cannot live. This life that you live, you live in Christ. You cannot live in Christ sober. You cannot live in Christ awake. You cannot live in Christ alive. Christ can only live his life in you when you are dead. So this that is dropped on the inside of you is to translate that deposit of God that is in you for it to be able to manifest for the entire world to see. That is the manifestation of true sons of God. That is the manifestation. Now let me show you something and we finish. This is Enoch. You know Enoch? I mean the Enoch of the Bible. Amen. Not your friend. Amen. So Enoch, the Bible says, and Enoch walked with God. 
and he was no more because God took him. You understand that scripture? I can touch you. Are you sure? Okay, touch me. Are you afraid? that they he walked with God this walking with God is not we are walking with Christ it is complete communion with God it is John 10 30 saying I am in the father and the father is in me in other words you hold me are you afraid Okay, please. Amina, listen. This is what it means. That when Enoch walked with God, he reached a dimension where the Lord became him and he became God. The, the word there that means and the Lord took him. It means he consumed him. There was no longer Enoch and there was no longer God. When the people saw God, they saw Enoch. He was consumed in him. It is that dimension that releases sons of God. That operate in power. Operate in authority. They say, you do this. Let me tell you why. Ah, amen. Listen. When I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, I cannot pray to myself. Can I? I cannot plead to myself. I cannot beg myself to do something. That is why when you are manifested in that realm, you speak as him. You say, by this time tomorrow, there shall be food flooding at the gate of Samaria. By this time tomorrow, you shall be rich. You speak as him because there is no difference between who you are and who he is. And when we start to speak and say, I have made you rich, people can look at us in the flesh and be like, who are you? I am in the Father and the Father is in me. When I say money shall find you, I know what I'm talking about because I am in the Father and the Father is in me. I speak as he speaks. You do not beg for anything to happen when you are in that dimension. As a matter of fact, that is why I'm so insistent on the fact that you don't pray, but you commune. This is a communion. When I go to the Father, He's my lover. I am. Was read the song of songs that He leads me to the bed chambers. Oh, Makahia Pata. When I'm in that place, I don't know what happens to me. The Lord consumes me and He takes me to another place. He holds me by the hand and He takes me to green places. We sit down and He says, Oh, I love thee. And I say, Oh, I love thee. Oh, I love thee. And I say, Oh, I love thee. Oh, I love thee. Our thing is a love affair. I want this. God, the one will you give it to me? I don't even know what that means. This is communion. What do you do with your lovers? Or you are young. You go there and then you start saying, Is that what you do? It is like this opportune time for you to release your heart to him and him to release his heart to you. To say, I have known thee. I love you with an everlasting love. You are mine and I'm yours. That is a communion. It is what makes you who he is. Do you go to your lover and you start saying, hey, you look at me. Are you looking after me? Some people go to God and start complaining. Ah! Aren't you, aren't you afraid? Or even, aren't you happy that he has showed up? 
when he shows up let me tell you people you cannot begin this whole nonsense of oh god i want a car god my husband you are not yet there because in that place when his glory appears it appears as light do you know that the light can speak to you and you are here but the lord is not speaking my name is hope I'm here to testify for the, for the goodness of God in my life. About two months ago, we were here at church and in one of the evening services, Prophet Dawn told us, okay, she asked a question, how many of us have gone to trips abroad, all expenses paid. But then she went ahead and prayed for the entire church that we made actually uh, fall within that grace. From that particular service, I've traveled out of the country four times, all expenses uh, paid. All the last flight I was on was on Friday. I had two flights back to Uganda. Here are some of my boarding passes. I really thank God so much. On the trip that I was on, all expenses paid. I was picked up at the airport by the state. The state picked me up from the airport. It did not stop at that. I felt like a VIP for the first time in my life. We don't know what it means so for a car to pass in traffic. Everybody's in traffic, but they are taking you. I dined with senators. I dined with members of parliament. I slept in very good hotels. And it did not stop at that. They went ahead to even give me a facilitation of 7 million Uganda shillings. It did not stop at that. I've already booked for yet another flight two weeks after today. I submit to the anointing of this place. I give glory and honor back to Jesus. But probably something I can tell to the members of this church. Whatever it is, however long you have been waiting for something, God's time is always perfect. He's never too late. He's never too early. So... Please take heart and know that where you're seated, you're under an open heaven. Glory and honor back to Jesus.